Hey, welcome back to the second video of my DIY smart security camera project. Today, I'll be showing the first version of the Python app that I created for it. This program will work with any RTSP enabled camera, including these Wi Fi cameras that you can get at retail. And in my previous video, I showed how you can create your own RTSP stream using the Raspberry Pi camera or any USB webcam connected to a Linux system. So if you're interested in following along with this project, I suggest watching that video first. Now before I get started showing how to use the app, I'll first give a quick review of what I have planned for this project. I'll be creating several iterations of this program and will be adding new features in each one. The first version I'll be showing today features motion detection, so it will only start recording if it detects a certain threshold of motion on the camera. This version is lightweight and is able to run on low power devices such as the Raspberry Pi 4. In a later video, I'll be showing the more advanced version of the program which will feature YOLO object detection, giving the program the ability to recognize people, animals, and a variety of common objects. By default, the program will only start recording when it detects a person, but this option can be customized by the user to anything they want. This app should also work well as a wildlife camera. For example, if someone wanted to record only mountain lions and ignore other animals that might appear. Afterwards, I'll be adding more features including a motion activated nightlight and other smart home features. So this will be an open ended project that I'll continue to work on in the future. But for now, let's focus on the first version of the app. So let's start by going to its GitHub repository. The link is in the video description. So like I said, this first version only has basic motion detection, but it uses image processing to detect motion rather than an IR sensor, which is the more common way of detecting motion. This is convenient since all you need is a camera. No other hardware or sensors are required. Here's an example of how the images look like when being processed by the program. It works really good in most cases. However, there might be a few edge cases where this approach doesn't work so well. For example, if there are trees in view of your camera and the wind starts blowing, then there's a chance the camera will pick up that motion and start recording. In my particular case, the shadows of a tree are visible during the later hours of the day which can sometimes trigger a recording. An infrared sensor would not have this issue since trees and shadows don't produce heat, so they only activate when a person or animal moves in front of it, which is why I'll probably be adding an IR sensor at some point in the future. This might also be helpful when it's dark outside. If it's pitch dark and the camera can't see anything, then obviously it can't do motion detection which is probably the biggest problem with this version of the program. Unless you're using a camera that has automatic night vision, such as this special Raspberry Pi camera. Many of these Wi-Fi cameras also have automatic night vision features as well. But in my case, my porch has a light near it which allows the motion detection to still work at night. So it's not really necessary for me to add an IR sensor or use a night vision camera but I will be adding another light that's motion activated, since the porch light isn't that bright. It's bright enough for the motion detection to still work, but not bright enough to distinguish a person if someone were to walk up to it. Also, the issue with trees or shadows triggering a recording should not be an issue in the next version of the program, thanks to the object detection that will be added. But despite this issue, the current version I'm showing today still works really good, and I've been happy with the results it has produced. And best of all, it does not require powerful hardware to run. Alright, so before downloading the repository, first make sure your system has the necessary software. If you're using a Debian or Ubuntu based distro, then these commands will install the required software. Next, you can clone the repository with git using this command. Now install the required Python dependencies with pip by navigating into the downloaded folder and entering this. 
After it's done, we're now ready to run the app. So to get it started, the only thing you need to provide is the address of your camera's RTSP stream with this command. Optionally, you can also provide the monitor argument which will open a window where you can view the stream while the program runs. Only use this option if you have a monitor connected to the system. For example, if you're running the app on a Raspberry Pi and are accessing it via SSH, then you'll need to make sure you don't include the monitor argument. But since I'm on a desktop, I'll run it with the monitor argument and enter my camera's address. And now the app is running. Whenever it detects a certain threshold of motion, it will print a message to the terminal indicating that it's recording along with a timestamp, and will also print a message when the recording stops. So to demonstrate this, I'll now walk out to my front patio. You can see it started recording right when it detected motion, and it stopped recording shortly after I left its view. Once it detects that motion has stopped, it will continue recording for an additional 8 seconds before it stops. You can quit the program by pressing the Q key. Now let's take a look at the recorded video by going to the folder where the program is located. It will automatically create new folders to store the recorded files. Each folder will be named with the current date and each video file will be named with the time of day it was recorded. So you can keep the program running indefinitely and it will keep everything organized nicely for you. Now let's watch the video that was just recorded. So you can see it worked as intended. But in case the default settings aren't working as well for you in your particular environment, I've included several advanced settings that can change how the algorithm reacts. The first option is called Threshold, which is basically the sensitivity of motion required to start the recording. The program compares each new frame with the previous frame and computes a single value that indicates how different the two frames were. The default value is 350, which I found to work good for my camera's current location. Lowering this value will make it more sensitive, meaning that minor motions will trigger a recording while raising this value means it will require more motion in the scene to trigger a recording. But I'll come back to this setting in a minute when I get to the testing feature. The next argument is start frames. So not only does there need to be a certain threshold of motion, but that motion needs to be detected for several consecutive frames in order for the recording to start. By default, this is set to three frames of motion but I don't think it's necessary to change this value unless you're running at a high frame rate such as 60 FPS. Then raising this value to 5 or 6 will probably help to avoid false positives. If you're running at a low frame rate of let's say 10 FPS, then setting this to 2 frames might give better results. But the default value should still work fine too. The next argument is tail length. And this sets the number of seconds to continue recording after it stops detecting motion. The default value is 8 seconds, which I found to be a good compromise. If you set this too low, then you might find recordings get stopped and started again more frequently. And if you set this too high, then your recordings will likely be longer than necessary and will take up more space on your storage drive. The next argument is auto delete. This feature reads the length of each video that gets recorded, and if the total length of the video equals the tail length value, then it's assumed that recording was a false positive and will automatically delete the file. This usually happens when, for example, a bird flies over the patio and the camera picks up the bird's shadow across the ground. The motion from the shadow is enough to trigger a recording, but the shadow only lasts a few frames at the beginning, and the recording ends up being the same length as the tail length, which again, is 8 seconds by default. I found that at least half of all the false positives I encounter end up falling into this category. Personally, I keep this feature on, but it's not enabled by default. 
Also, this most likely will not be necessary in the next version of the app, since object detection should eliminate most, if not all, false positives. Finally, I've included two testing features that should help if you want to fine-tune the program to perform its best in your particular environment. The testing feature disables recordings and prints out the motion value for each frame if that value exceeds the threshold. You'll probably want to set a low threshold value at first when using this feature. This will give you an opportunity to walk in front of the camera and see the range of motion values it picks up so you can set the threshold value appropriately. The goal is to set the threshold high enough so that only major movements will trigger it such as you walking in front of its view. The last argument is called frame click, which is an additional testing feature. This mode should only be used with a video file, not a live RTSP stream, and it allows you to advance the frames in the video one by one to get a more accurate view of the exact threshold value that triggered the recording. So I'll demonstrate this by running it with this video file I recorded earlier. And I'll also lower the threshold value to, let's say, 50, which is pretty low. Each time I press down a key, it will advance the frame one by one. Or I can hold down the key to advance through the frames more quickly. When doing this, make sure you're typing the keys into the video window, and not the terminal window. So you want to make sure you click the video window first before pressing the key. The goal is to take note of the threshold values that get printed out right when a body comes into view. Once you determine the optimal threshold value, simply enter this as an argument each time you run the program. Well, that pretty much sums up how to use the app, so I encourage you to try it out and let me know how it goes. The next version with object detection will run best on a GPU. So in my next few videos, I'll be showing how to install and set up NVIDIA's CUDA and AMD's Rock M. After showing the second version with object detection, I'll also be doing a detailed video going over the Python code and how the program works. So if you're interested in learning more about programming and Python, then be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Also, feel free to go through the code and if you have any questions or suggestions, then drop a comment and let me know. I realize I could have spent more time implementing a more advanced control algorithm that takes into consideration things such as averages or rate of change, but I think the control method I use still works really good while also being efficient and lightweight. And like I said, the next version with object detection should fix the minor issues that this one might have. But anyway, that's all for today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.